Okay, so something I've been thinking about for a while is, well, I do app development as well, um, and I thought it would be good to do a wee series on creating an app. Uh, I'm creating, trying to create an app just now in Swift, um, as well as learning Swift at the same time, but I thought it would be good to do another app, a simple app, and then walk, do a series of five, ten minute videos walking you through the or walking through the process of creating an app uh, so here ignore all these icons and this never gets tidied up uh, I'll show you what what the sort of app I think will that I'll make is going to be a, a magic eight ball app um, and it'll so first I'm just going to focus on basic a basic app and then we'll make it a bit better a bit more fancy so over the series that uh, uh, will do that. So it looks something like uh, if we can make this is an iPhone here obviously um, and then inside on on the app we'll have like uh, the screen here um, so we'll just call it This isn't uh, this isn't what it'll look like, but you get the idea. I think it's going behind that magic eight ball. Bring that in front. No, not getting that. Right, we'll just put it there. That'll be fine. Right. In fact, let's start again. Get rid of it. Right. So. How are we going to do this? We don't want any fill, that's what we don't want, right? Get rid of the fill. We'll just have a bit of stroke. And some pixels for a border. Can we, can we get a rounded rectangle? Let's do that instead, right? Here we go. There we go. Beautiful, right? So it's going to be called the Magic 8 Ball. Um, and then, so what I'm thinking is to start with. We'll just have a button, um, so we'll put a wee button down here, and we'll go shake. Um, so we'll shake the magic eight ball, uh, shake by pressing the button, um, and then obviously in the middle, we'll have our ball. That's the ball. This looks a bit like a washing machine. Doesn't matter. Anyway. So we're going to have the title, the shake button, and then some way of displaying the message. So the message here in the middle, um, and it'll say something like, yes. For example. So that's what we're going to do. So let's, that's a good starting point. It's fine, right? So we'll start off now, we'll jump into Xcode. Well, let me just put on. Uh, how do you put on Do Not Disturb? There we go. On. Right. So let's jump into Xcode. Now you, you've probably got Xcode if you're watching this. Um, if you've not, um, you can get it from the Apple Developer site. I uh, put a link to that in the description so you can see where to get that. Uh, these are all just the different things from the the the. Um, Uh, what are the different things, different projects from the course that I'm working through, which is really good. I'll put a link to that later as well, but not not this time, right? So, first thing we're going to do is create a new Xcode project. And we're going to make that app, right? So it's going to be a game, but it's going to be a single view application. We're not going into game things here. Um, oh, but these other things. I've never used them this this far, but let's go into single view application. And we're going to call this uh, Magic 8 Ball, right? So the team will be me, and the organization name is not Andy Fraser, actually. It's G4 Mobile, because that's what's registered with Apple. The organization identifier there, G4 Mobile. That depend. These things depend on how your account's set up at developer.apple.com 
we're going to do it in Swift. It's going to be a universal thing, so it's going to work on all the iPhones and all the iPads. Well, pretty much not the earlier ones, I don't think, but we'll see. It's going to be simple anyway, so I don't see why not. Um, and use core data, use unit test, and I, UI test. We don't need to worry about any of that. Right, so next. Where are we going to save it? We're going to save it in this Swift folder. That's fine. No, nope, don't worry about Git repositories just now. Create. And then up comes the screen. Here's the first screen. So the display name is going to be Magic 8 Ball. We might change that, but we're not ready to deal with that yet. Um, anything else we need to look at here? It's version 1, build 1. Um, no, that's fine. So the first thing probably is a good idea if we transfer that design that we did over onto the app and then we can see what it's going to look like. So here's the the view controller view on the storyboard. Um, if, you view, if you were creating apps for the iPhone before you probably got used to the thing called the interface builder and things like, uh, what were they called again? I can't remember. Uh, what were they called? Hmm. Can't remember what they were called before they were called storyboards. Let's have a look. New file. What have we got in here? Hmm. Well, they were views. Let's open that and see what happens. Yeah, just stick it in there. Oh yeah, nibs and exhibs. I'll just delete that again. Right. So don't worry about that anyway. It doesn't matter. Move that to the trash. So in here. This is where we can build the screen for our application and what it will look like on the phone. So we don't need to add much here. What we're going to add to start with is a label up the top here. That's where we're going to put the name. So if we just double click that we can put magic 8 ball and then click off it and then we can drag it back to the middle. And we can do all sorts of things like change the font size of that and uh, make it look more fancy or change it for a picture we might do that later but today let's just get the basics down and we'll add a button this is going to be the button that says shake shake and then in the middle we're gonna have another label and in here we're just gonna leave it saying label because we'll clear it off anyway that's going to be where the where the answer comes up the answer to your question after you've shaken the ball. Um, there's all sorts of other things that we need to do in here to make it work with iPads and different sizes of iPhones and such like but we'll go with that just now. We're going to run it on the this is you'll see down here down there it's got I view it as iPhone 7 that means we're designing this um, storyboard layer here for the iPhone 7. If we change it to an iPhone 5 it would be much smaller uh, if we change it to an iPhone 7 Plus, it would be larger, so these sizes all have to change and we'll look into that in a future lesson, a future whatever, whatever this is, a future part of the series, right? So let's run it and see how our app looks. Oh, this is the first part of the app, but well, we've been at this 8 minutes now, we're going to have something that looks like an app here. It's coming. <clears throat> Where's the? Here's the simulator. It's come up. There's all sorts of different projects there, and then pretty soon everything's going to come up on the screen. Let's bring them over so we can see. We can. There we go. So we've got magic eight ball label and shake, and that's a button. Don't do anything. So that's fine, right? Let's stop that. And then we'll go just for this is maybe going to be 15 minutes. I wasn't sure how long these videos will take, but 15 minutes is fine. So we'll go to view controller.swift. This is where so you've got app delegate.swift which does other things and view controller.swift which is in this case the the part that holds the, all the code for this view. So if you added up here you can add a different view controller. We might get into that, I'm not sure, but if you add a different view controller, you need to have another .swift file to control it. 
So let's just dive into this real quickly. Over the series, we'll we'll become more, um, we'll get into what the things do more. But for now, we'll just look at um, what we need to look at. So we've got this the classes, the view controller. That's what we're dealing with. Is because this is called the view controller. And um, where can we see that? Here? No. Not sure. Can't. Anyway, it's got that's the view controller, right? And it relates to this, so it's a, it's tied into that. This function here, view did load. This tells it. This is a, f a function which is pulled when the view is loaded. It says it in the name basically. And then, so anything you want to do here when the view is loaded, like if you wanted to clear a label, we want to do that, you would do it in here um, to set it all up for use when you get, when you've loaded that. So, what does it say? Do any additional setup after loading the view, typically from a nib. The nib is what? That view. This is a nib. This one here. So in here we need to we need to put in the controls to to make the button do stuff and to make the label do stuff. So that's that's as far as we're going to do today. We're going to make the button do something and we're going to make the label do something, right? So it's going to be the same thing. The button's going to make the label do something. So if we click on this little circles up here, which is called the assistant editor, it brings up this editor over two screens. Mm. That's interesting, but we don't really want that. What we want is the the one that we were looking at, this viewcontroller.swift on one side, and then on the other side, what we want is the storyboard. So we can bring up the storyboard here. It gets a bit cramped on the, <coughs> on the old laptop. So we'll pull in the label. We'll deal with the label first, right? So to, to make it so that you can deal with the label in your code, you need to create what's called an outlet. So if we press control, click on the label and drag over up here, this is an outlet definition for the label. So we'll call this one answer label. And this way of writing the names there that I've done with the lowercase answer and then uppercase L able is the sort of standard. It's called camel case. Cause it's kind of like a camel sitting down or something like that. I don't know. But that's fine, right? And it's going to be a UI label, it already knows that, and, it, and we can have it as an outlet collection, we're not getting into that today, or an outlet, because it's a label only has those two options, and then the storage is weak, we're not getting into that today either, it doesn't matter, you can have weak or strong, we're going to go weak, and then we're going to connect it. And you'll see up here you've got um, an IB outlet, that's interface builder outlet, this is the interface builder, and then it gives it a name, answer label, and then this is the the type, it's a UI label. Um, so this is called a UI label, user interface label, makes sense. And then whilst we're here, we might as well connect up the button as well. So this is different, we don't, we're not really, at this stage, we're not really interested in changing what the button says. What we want to do is make the button do something. So this connection type here is going to be an action. And that's a new one, you only get that for things which you can make a difference on right so we'll change that to action and we'll make the name shake button like that uh, also this sort of btn is a standard thing as well you insert right in button you write btn you should have done lbl for label but whatever you can do what you want type so it's going to be a ui button but we set it to any and that's a different story as well um Touch up inside the event type is I any you can do any one of these so these all do different things. Um, I'll, I'll go through a couple of them. So touch cancel is when you touch a button and move off it and then let it go. Usually that does nothing. Touch down means that as soon as you press the button it'll do something. Uh, touch down repeat. I think that's just exactly what it says. The other ones what we've got here touch drag inside so touching a button and drag it. That'll do something else. Touch drag outside. Touch up inside is what we're going for. That means you press the button and let it go without going outside of the button. And touch up outside. I thought that was the same as touch cancel. We'll go into them in a different uh, episode, I guess. Or value changed. Uh, that's another thing as well. So touch up inside is what we want. Um, and then the argument is the sender. And that basically means that whatever the action 
is going to um, create the action is going to fire based on whatever sender sent it and the, the sender was the button it's always going to be the button but it's, you set it to any and uh, we'll go into why that is later so this is a new function rather than being an outlet this is a function um, so now we're linked up with a button we've got the label linked up so now we can have some fun we can get this label doing something but before we do that we're going to go into this view did load and we'll make it so that the button isn't showing label when the view loads so to do that we need to tell first tell the the dot swift this um dot swift file that we we want to you, we want to do something with the label so we do that by calling it by its name answer label and then we do dot and we're calling the text property of the label which is at this point label because that's the default that we set it to and then we want to make it equal to nothing we just want it to be blank now the good thing about swift is you don't need to put a semicolon in there that you're done now right so if we run that then when the view comes up it should be empty not empty just the label but it should be empty so it shouldn't take too long there we go nothing there right shake still does nothing but it is calling the function right so now stop that again just to save the battery a wee bit so now we want when you press the button we're going to make the button say something so this is all we're going to do today we're just going to make the button the label say something once we press the button uh, so let's do that now so when you press the button we want answer label equals yes oh no 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 answer label text property equals yes right so that should make sense right when we press the button this is the function for when that's called when we press the button it's going to set the answer label text property to the string yes get strings in another episode too and then this one is just saying when the view loads set it to zero to nothing to nil whatever an empty string so it only calls that once calls the other one whenever you press the button all right so let's run it and then and then we're done with this app for today so this is the magic eight ball uh, it's pretty predictable at the moment because it's always going to answer yes uh, so let's just just go and ask a wee question. Um, what will we ask it? Uh, should I have cake for dinner? Oh, <laughs> right, right. I guess that's there. Uh, well, that's that then. We well, we can do best of three. Should I have cake for dinner? Oh, it said yes again. Should I have a uh, cake for dinner? Three times. That's that's good enough for me. It's gonna be cake for dinner. Right. Let's stop it. So that's. That's it. First part, first episode of um, this. What were what are we calling this? Tiny steps app development. Let's go for that. I think I think that's a good name, right? So that's the first step. So we've we've got ourselves an app there. We could put that on the app store. We could put that on the app store and shift a shift a hundred apps a day. But I think we'll make it a bit better before we do that. So. The next time we'll look into getting some more answers in there uh, so that when you press the button it's not always going to say yes um, and we'll maybe look at jazzing up the user interface a wee bit uh, but we don't, don't want to go too quick I mean 18 minutes we've got to work on that, that's, that's a good start um, so I think good yeah next time we'll look at how we can get different answers and then well we'll have something else in there as well so that's that um thank you for watching if you've got any questions leave them in the, or or if you'd like to see anything in that leave it in the comments below um and if you have anything else to say stick it in the comments below give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you like this uh thanks again goodbye